Our next speaker is Titi Babafunso, representing Georgia State University. <laughs> Hello everyone. <laughs> I'd like to say a big thank you to the moderator, who happens to be the program coordinator at Georgia State University, Shireen Ban. Also to Dr. Sharon Hill, Dr. Sally Wallace, and to my amazing colleagues from Georgia State University, who have entrusted me with this huge honor to represent them today. I've titled my presentation, Opportunity to Become. Allow me to tell you the story of two teenagers, Ekene, who is from Southwest Nigeria, and Daisy from Georgia, here in the US. Although Ekene and Daisy are from two different worlds, they have certain things in common. They are both intelligent teenagers from low-income families. They go to public schools within their local community and would like to become pilots in the future. But while Daisy has access to quality education offered by qualified and dedicated teachers, she has access to amazing learning resources, like this very well-equipped library. Ekene from Nigeria isn't that lucky. You see, Ekene has to battle with incessant school closures caused by teacher strike, with inadequate learning infrastructure, and failing school resources. This is a picture of Ekene, Ekene's library. The roof's been damaged, and then the books are unusable. The story of Ekene resonates all throughout Africa, and it epitomizes the state of government-funded schools. Take, for instance, your state, Southwest Nigeria. It has 969 public schools and only 57 private schools. This means that majority of the student population go to these public schools. And the reason is simple. It is far cheaper, in fact, 10 times cheaper than going to private schools. So because of this huge dependence on the government to provide affordable education, it's not uncommon to see students studying in de under decaying environmental conditions with little or no access to basic educational resources. This is a school library. Where are the chairs, the books, or even computer resources that aid educational research? Nowhere. Studies have shown that quality education is necessary for growth and development. According to a Nigerian educational scholar, he says that by improving the learning infrastructure and providing learning resources, especially books, a society rid itself of the dead weight of ignorance, illiteracy. It improves the quality of life of its people, and it gives them an opportunity for self-actualization. It in turn gives itself the capital for development. Now to do nothing has its own consequences. Two examples come to mind. The Boko Haram terrorist group in Nigeria have been known to recruit young children known as al in northern Nigeria as suicide bombers. These are kids who ought to be in school, but because their parents cannot afford the education, they are forced to roam the streets in groups, begging for home where they are preyed on. I also heard the story in South Africa, where young girls from poor homes are forced to seek help from older benefactors, whom they call blessers. These men pay for their education in exchange for sex. And this sex is often unprotected, and they are in no way to debate that. I've heard that this culture is responsible for the high rate of HIV AIDS among teenage girls in South Africa. The question now is, what can you and I do as young leaders? A lot, I would say. I'll take examples for the, from the experiences of my GSU colleagues. We can help by partnering with our government to provide equitable education to all, especially those in marginalized communities. Emmanuel from Cameroon does that. He actually, with his friends, constructed a library in his undeserved community to be able to help the people there. Nonprofits can adopt schools. They can embark on projects to help the schools. They can also give scholarship grants to indigent students. Individuals like you and I can contribute our old books. We can organize book drives to get books into this community. And also, we can help these communities through volunteering with organizations that support this aim. This is what Ekene's library looks like now. 
and as a result of work by my foundation and contributions from individuals. In just a month, we were able to re renovate the library to provide chairs, and we have a few books, but the work is not yet done. To move the echinaceas and daisies of Africa from where they are to where they want to be pilots, we have to act now. I'll end again with the words of Madiba, our father. And he said, education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. Thank you.